Sound Design. Yeah. Right, so how do you practice aligning mains to front fills when you don't have a PA? Or how do you practice aligning mains to front fills when you don't even have uh, a similar modeling environment? What if you have two speakers that are from different manufacturers that are not even meant to play together? Well, this is a real thing that happens to us all the time as live sound engineers. And this happened to me on a recent show. So if you've already seen my previous videos, we talked about um, practicing EQ, um, aligning mains to subs, and now we're going to talk about aligning full range elements, mains to front fills. So on this particular show that I worked on, I had two speakers from two different manufacturers. And this was a pretty unique situation because um, not only are they from two different manufacturers, but neither of them actually have a modeling or prediction environment that would really be helpful for me. Um, so my mains were RCF HDL20A, which don't go into their prediction and modeling environment. As far as I know, there's no way to do that. And then my front fills were QSC K12.2. And this is a pretty common speaker that I see show up all the time. It's a workhorse unit, um, often gets used for different kinds of fill applications. So let's look at how we can uh, start to combine these guys. Now, first of all, just to remind you where I got these things, um, the RCF speaker I got from its GLL file, which I downloaded from the RCF site. Um, I have another video, a previous video, all about how to download those and export them. Um, and then the other file, this QSC file, uh, I measured myself. So I just happened to have this. Um, but I can tell you where to download it if you email me, nathan at sounddesignlive.com. Okay, the common scenario that we see, uh, here's my impulse responses. Red is the RCF speaker and green is the QSC. The way I would commonly do this kind of alignment in the field is first I would just measure the solo element, then I would just uh, run the delay locator, and then I would look at the delta delay and then add delay until they were matched, just basically looking at the delay locator. Um, and then I would look at the transfer function and make sure that I was getting summation. So let's look at how I might practice that here. So first, let's just do the EQ of the solo element. Now, I've already kind of done this because I don't want this video to be too long. So here on the front fill, um, I can put in some filters. So I want this green to match this red. So I'll put in a high shelf to bring that down a little bit. Now you can see these match. I'll take it in and out again so you can see. And I want this little section here to match a little bit better. And let's see what the smoothing is. Yeah, that's fine for now. So I'll put in a peak filter right there. Just bring that up down a little bit. And the other thing is that I think this isn't super realistic. I think probably what's going to happen in the field is that once I actually get off axis from the main and find the crossover region where they match and level and I want to do my alignment, I think there's probably going to be a big haystack here. And this is part of what Bob McCarthy calls Bambi versus Godzilla. There's so much low end coming off of the mains going all over the audience that I don't really need to worry about the low end that much. So to make this a little bit more realistic, it's probably a good idea to put in some kind of low shelf to provide some more isolation here in the low end. Um, because let me give you a quick preview. If we look at the phase, we're gonna see, oh boy, these guys are not phase compatible through their entire operating range. And so you might look at this low end and you think, oh my God, what are we going to do? Like, these are not compatible. We're going to put in a bunch of all-pass filters and fix it. Not necessarily. All this stuff down here in the low end, you know, when we're out in the field is going to be in isolation. Um, and let me demonstrate to you that, let me demonstrate that to you over here in Map 3D as well. So in this model, I've got this line array up here, and I've got this little front fill down here, and I've just created a, a kind of a demo, an exaggerated demo here where this front fill might be covering a bunch of space up here. And I put a microphone in, and I said, okay, um, if I 
unmute both of these and I look at my measurement viewer and I hide my stored trace, I can see that, okay, I pretty much found the acoustic crossover point. If I go to my express settings here and I move this microphone around, you know, by tiny increments, then, you know, I can see the IR adjust. And now I, I pretty much found the perfect crossover point here where the impulse responses match. And now I could do my alignment. But what I'm really interested in is just demonstrating to you how the EQ changes. So um, I'm gonna hide this for a second and just show you this. This is what this array looks like on axis. So if I were to grab this microphone and drag it way back here, to so it's more of an on axis measurement of that array, this is what it would look like, okay? And now if we take a look at that microphone again, sorry, take a look at our live measurement at the crossover point and we mute the front fill so it's just the mains, you can see that there's um, a big uh, haystack here in the low end. So this is the kind of action that I'm talking about that we're probably gonna see in the low end when we go to work on this show um, and you can see that they're separated down here by like 10, 11, 12, 13, maybe 14 dB into isolation. So this is why I'm suggesting that over here in our practice environment that we can kind of create, create the same environment. So what I'm going to do on the front fill here is I'm going to put in a low shelf and just knock it down 5 dB. And now we're kind of more into isolation here and let me show you what that's doing so if i turn on the sum this black trace between these if i bypass this you can see oh there's kind of this this uh, cancellation here that sucks and if i put in the filter and knock down that low end we start to move in that into isolation not such a big deal anymore and so just trying to train myself on where where am i going to go to look at tomorrow what i care about with the front fill is restoring intelligibility in the areas where my main is not covering enough, right? I need to fill in those areas. So what I really care about is really the mid-range, the highs, and especially around the vocal intelligibility region if I'm doing you know, a spoken word corporate event, which is what this was. Okay, so that's just the EQ and kind of setting up the environment. You know, I've pretty much uh, done a good job here of making uh, my traces match with a little bit of level and EQ. The next thing I want to look at is what is going to happen when I just run the delay locator on my audio analyzer and try to find the delta delay arrival times between these two speakers. I can tell you what's going to happen. So these are normalized impulse responses here. And if I zoom in, I can see that this peak of this red guy is right here. This peak of this green guy is right here. So that's what the delay locator is going to tell me to do. I'm going to adjust the delay of the front fill. I'll just put my cursor here. Oh, that's too much. Let's say like 9.97 milliseconds. There we go. Now I can put my cursor here and just sort of click down and move in tiny increments. Okay, so I've aligned the two highest peaks and I can, I can be pretty certain that that's what my delay locator would tell me to do. And now I can go ahead and take a look at the sum between those. It doesn't look bad. I'm getting, you know, some summation here, a little bit here and here. And it might be interesting to take a quick look at the phase response here. And I can see that, you know, I have some alignment here and some up here. Uh, but it's not great. But anyway, just to begin with, I think this is what the delay locator is going to tell us. It's going to look at these peaks and say, hey, this is, this is now time aligned. So I say, okay, let me go ahead and store that. This is a solution, right? Um, and so let me delete this one. Okay, so I'll store this and I'll just call it, um, or you know what, I'll just call it aligned peaks aligned peaks and that's it cool so version one now let's see if we can improve on this so i think an interesting way to look at this in cross light is that it has this filter called a peak 
bandwidth or it has some different variations of it, peak Q. Um, but let's look at a peak bandwidth around two kilohertz. So we know that, you know, basically like the one octave region around two kilohertz is where we have a lot of the intelligibility in speech. So it might be fun to just look at that and then align my impulse responses after I've done that modification. So now you can see it's put this um, peak filter around 2K and now I can do a slightly different alignment. So let's go back to my front fill and let's do it a polarity inversion and change the delay a little bit. So polarity inversion and tiny increments in the delay. There we go. And it'd be interesting to see where this got aligned in the phase. Okay, right up here and around 2K, kind of where we expected, right? Let's take off that filter. All right, now it might be interesting to compare this solution. Okay, so here in black, I have my new solution. So you can see I have about the same summation here in the very high end here around the mid-range. Now I have improved summation where I did, uh, you know, my alignment around two kilohertz. Now I have a, I've created a dip here and a peak here. Um, so let's save this one as well. And we'll call this aligned to kilohertz. Um, now we're not going to find a perfect alignment. This is all about just playing around doing research. Um, because as I mentioned in other videos, I have discovered that the more I just look at this data and play around with it, the easier everything's going to go tomorrow. We know everything's going to change. Uh, probably they'll bring a different speaker. And so I'll have to throw all this research out the window, but I've practiced looking at it and now just everything's going to go better tomorrow. Okay. So I don't expect to find a perfect alignment today, but what other next steps can we take to play with this? Well, um, I said that we're probably not going to worry about doing any kind of alignment in the low end, but it would be cool to see if we could make an improvement in this area, just as a, like a form of research. So I have a couple of ideas. Let's turn this back on compound and let's switch over to just looking at the phase. And we, we know we're going to be looking in this area and we can see this, this is where the problem is, right? Um, so we've got um, this area here where we get out of alignment. What can we do? So some ideas to play with. Um, let's go back to my front fill and I've got filters over there. So I already have this low shelf and I can see that that's having an effect in that area. And what might be interesting is just to see like, oh, when I change that filter, like that changes the alignment. So I don't really need that stuff in the low end. I'm not super uh, concerned about that. So if I turn that way down, that's interesting. That gives me an alignment there. Uh, do I want to save that? Sure. Let's go to memories. Uh, let's call that um, minus 30 dB on the, um, on the front fill low shelf. Okay, and let's set this back to where it was. I think it was at minus five. What else can we try? Um, how about a high pass filter? So what about something like something like an LR12? Oh, there we go. Boom. It's already in alignment. Where is it at? It's at 900 hertz. So it might be interesting to see how that happens. So I'll put it at 100 and then I'll step up by 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. It makes me wonder if maybe a more gentle filter would be, be interesting better. to store uh, this memory as well. So let's call this um, LR12 900 hertz on the front fill. And uh, let's try one more thing. So I'll bypass this. Let's over to the filters. Let's put in a first order all pass filter, which I know is going to screw up everything. Um, so I'll have to make some changes. But let's put in a first order all pass filter around 1K 1300. 
and then realign. So I put this in and now let's head back over here and I can even already see in the impulse response, right? First order all pass filter, everything is off now by 180 degrees up here. So invert polarity. Okay. We can see this is already pretty well aligned. I think I'm not going to do anything. I mean, I could put my cursor down here and take this up and down a little bit, you know, that's maybe slightly better. And we can even go back over here to the magnitude, look at the sum. And now if we want to get really picky just for fun, look at how this changes. Okay, let's say that I like that one at 1300 hertz and I think 9.85 milliseconds of delay. Now we have all of these results and some of them are the same color. So that's too bad. Let's try to make them different. Colors. Okay. Um, now we can kind of see the results, which, which one do I like? Let's try to take some of these out. Um, so we have a lot of agreement up here, right? We're doing pretty well there. This red one takes a big dip here, um, around an area that is pretty important for intelligibility. So let's get rid of that one. Um, now they're all pretty similar around this area. This orange one takes a big dip here. I don't know. I'm just sort of playing around. Let's get rid of that one. And now we can see pretty easily that they're all pretty similar, except that I think this indigo one is the most consistent. And that is the final one that we did by adding this first order all pass filter and then changing the delay a little bit. So I don't know what's, what's perfect. But now I have some options. If I get into the field tomorrow and things actually turn out this way, I know that, you know, if I have a first order all pass filter available to me, that that might be a quick way to, you know, get a better phase alignment, you know, through this entire region. So that's how I like to practice aligning mains to front fills so that I can make better decisions in the field. Um, I'd love to hear from you. How do you practice doing this stuff? Maybe you saw me doing something wrong or maybe you have some suggestions for how I could make improvements on my own process. I'd love to hear it. Please comment on this video and thanks for watching. Nice.